<laughs> the green hat, this is Roberto's hat, Roberto professional, father, etc. And this is Roberto coaching hat. When I take this, I'm a coach. Okay, first of all, I'm Italian. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> so if somebody watches this episode today, what are they going to learn, Roberto? How to combine personal interests plus uh, work commitment and of course be happy about that and not die in the attempt. You might know Roberto Ferraro for his visual illustration which have captured a broad audience online, including over 200,000 followers across platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram. But there is more to his story. Roberto has a successful banking career. In addition to that, he is a transformation coach guiding others on their path to personal growth. I'm Italian in Spain, 20 years. One of the things that I love, mix things and to try stuff and to experiment. Most important thing, I'm father of two kids. <laughs> <laughs> My children teach me so much. I work in a commercial bank. And then I am a coach and I work on the CDI, and a co-active training. And I also love to tinker with technology. Are you playing to win? of playing not to lose. There is no perfect formula and you have to experiment. Please hit subscribe to the show and leave a review or comment about how you find this episode. So if somebody yeah. watches this episode today, what are they going to learn, Roberto? How to combine personal interests plus uh, work commitment and of course, be happy about that and not die in the attempt and say, oh, well, I, this is so overwhelming. So what I would love that people perhaps take out something that can use. Can you tell us something about you a little bit more? Who, are, who is Roberto? Yeah. Uh, okay. First of all, I'm Italian. And here, nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're Italian living in Spain. Exactly. I'm Italian living in Spain. 20 years already, this is the 20th year, and it's more, almost half of my life, I'm 42. And uh, in this time, I, I actually, all, I live all my professional life here in Spain, which is also a pretty uh, peculiar situation. And uh, one of the things that I love, uh, as, as I said in the beginning, is to mix things and to try stuff and to experiment. So what I, from the, work perspective. What I did all this time, I work in a commercial bank here in Spain, most of my professional life. And what I did all these years was mainly uh, what I would say transformation project. It can be uh, cultural or organizational and of course technological because there are also technology and new ways of working. And what I enjoy from this is the constant uh, challenge of doing something new, of building things, seeing what works, see how it affects the people, and and also that the mixing of technology and people. These are the things that I enjoy the most. And I also take these things into my own uh, uh, private life, in which I, uh, first of all, I, I am most important thing. I'm a father of two kids, <laughs> and this, and also my children teach me so much. So this is one of the things that really defines who I am. And then I, I am a coach and uh, for on CTI, and a co-active training. And I also love to tinker with technology, of course, with AI and all these things. But in general, uh, the mix of people and technology is what really excites me. I was looking at uh, your profile and, uh, and you've done a lot of things, a lot. So, yeah. And as you said, you, you are embracing change continuously, not only in your main job in banking, but also through all your interests. Why? What is this drive mm. to continuously reinvent? No, you don't need to reinvent yourself. You keep adding. And this is the, one of the ideas. It's, it's not a constant reinvention. It's like, okay, this is what I was two years ago. And now I'm. I have this, I have it in my backpack, but I'm adding new stuff and the mix is constantly changing. So what excites me is that you don't give up what you are. You add more stuff. And for example, I mentioned the coaching. I started my coaching training one year and a half ago. 
is is tiny part. But then I connect the coaching with what I do in the transformation part, for example, in change management, in listening to the people and seeing, asking questions, uh, re- being interesting to the other person. So it's another piece of the puzzle. And this is like an infinite puzzle that you keep adding pieces and, and you never know when you're going to finish. Actually, you're never yeah. going to finish. And it's like more and more. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a, a, the perfect explanation of portfolio career. Yeah. You have you have different initiatives which which gives you everything, joy, fun, interest, curiosity, everything. And that's and that's an amazing thing and still you have a, a corporate job. So there it is. It's possible, right? And that's what we're going to talk about how this is possible. I was again reading in your reading your uh profile and um and there was one job you had, which was crypto mining ah. farm operator. <laughs> what is this? Well, this is uh, actually this is a, is a way to say that I do. Did I mine Ethereum in my garage? But what does this entail? I always wanted to understand what does it mean mining. You know, when you say mining, I imagine you go under. Underground and you mine, and you see how how this we were talking about. Uh, thank you for picking this. This is actually this is one of my the, the things that excite me the most. And to be honest, it did not excite so much my wife because you can imagine what it is to have a mining farm in your garage: heat, noise, yeah. dust, yeah. all these things. And it was it was <laughs> a nice experiment again to have a, a transaction in a in. A, blockchain you have to verify the that the, the wallet the source and the destination have the the first the source and the money you don't you have to avoid this double spending which is i have my money and i cannot spend twice so when you have validated that you have this money or these uh, tokens you register the transaction on the blockchain and you distribute it to everyone so this is how it works so you have thousands of many copies of this ledger and so everyone has the same and you cannot fake it so it's so hard it's almost impossible to fake yeah it's a so, it's a great technology from that point of view exactly so Absolutely. it gives trust even if you don't know the counterpart which is the beauty of the block yeah. you don't have to know the people and how this works we have two ways the proof of stake and proof of work i don't i'm not going to discuss the proof of stake but let's go proof of work to have the proof of work there was some mathematical calculation that every time you have to do and you have to come to the solution and you don't know the solution. It's like factorial. It's, it's so complex and so time consuming that someone eventually will find the key to this mathematical puzzle. And when they find the key, they can validate the solution. And all this computing power is needed for this validation. And it gets harder and harder as the blockchain becomes more mature and times goes. And when someone gets this puzzle correct, they receive a reward. And they receive a reward, which is the incentive for the uh, people participating in the blockchain to contribute and to do this calculation. And because it's so energy and time consuming that if you don't have a reward, why would I do that? Just to, to to give. And then there is a second source of income, which is the commission from this transaction. So you have the first source, which is the blockchain reward, and the second is the commission. Long story short, it was a like computing, distributed computing in the garage, and it was more for the fun of it than for, for the incentive. In the end, I managed to break even because it also has to uh, invest in this equipment. And now yeah, of course, and this is why, like, it's it's again, it's like a gamble. You are doing this, but maybe it's not worth anything, and it's just like a piece of of junk. <laughs> piece of junk, yeah. yeah. And you mind that for months. Yeah, and, and yeah. this was so fun because it. And now, for example, now that I'm explaining this, I, I realize that yeah, it, it was it was also a learning experience because now I know how it works. I saw it. And I used it on my own. So, and I would definitely encourage people to that want to understand things to try to to dip their toes 
into the water and see how it was. Not so you can have an opinion and say, okay, I did this. Of course, you don't have to build a mining farm in your garage. But as I said, in this example, in this tiny example, you can just experiment with a little software on your computer and see how things work. And now the beauty of the times where we are living is that everything is so democratized. So you can do so many things that before you could not. And on the other side, you have so many things that you can do and you have to choose. You cannot do everything. Yeah, the choice is, is huge. And when there is a lot of choice, people normally, it's paradoxical, but it's people kind of freeze because there's so many things that you don't know which one to choose. Another fact I discovered about you is that you had a startup and, and it failed. Yeah, absolutely. As 80% of startups, the 80% failed in the first two years. We were exactly in the mean. In the category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and this is, yeah, this is actually there are, of course, some good memories of this and some painful memories of this. And I, I always, yeah, you, when you see, oh, yeah, it's great to fail. It's amazing. You learn so much. Yes. Yes. And still, it's painful. When you have it's to, painful. Yeah. And it's painful even if more when you see that the other person, I, I was the co-founder, of course, I was not the main uh, promoter of the company. The other co-founder was my wife and she invested so much of her energy, of her uh, optimism. And she also left her job to do this and to try and to do this experiment. And it's very easy to say, yeah, you learn so much, the, the balance is positive, et cetera, et cetera. But then, okay, it's not the same seeing from the outside and living it because you put all of your effort, all of your energy into something. And then you have to decide when you have to decide, okay, now that's the moment. Now we are not learning anymore. The, the marginal returns on learning, let's say, are minimum. And now I'm just putting in time to keep this machine or whatever running. And now that, that's the moment when, of course, when you see from the outside, it's obvious that now you have to stop. But when you are inside, oh no, maybe let's give it six months more. Let's give it three months. And then when you're starting thinking about this, it's a trap. I think it's a trap because you can, you never know. Six more months, three more months, who knows? And this is a typical thing that perhaps will happen and that it was the correct idea, maybe. It was not the best moment. So timing is crucial. And and maybe we didn't do anything wrong. Maybe it was not just meant to be in that moment. So we have to accept that. And we have to take all the good things and see if we can transform it into something else. And now that two years have passed, it's very easy to look back and see, hmm, now I, and, and this is a beautiful conversation, conversation that I have with my wife and with the distance. Now we see, oh, I learned so much and I'm grateful for that. And because I now I know how C SaaS works, how uh, I can do accounting, I can do online marketing, I can do uh, finance, I can prepare pitch decks, I can do also community management, so many things in a small way that you have to do from end to end and you learn so much. And when you are again in a corporate job, you can see things from a different perspective. And all these things are again in your backpack and it's so easy to see it now, two years after. But when you are in the moment, it's like, wow, I spent so much energy and this is not working. What am I going to do? And this is also why it's important when you do this to have a backup plan so you don't put all your eggs in one basket. This will be so much pressure. So, for example, we're talking about portfolio. It comes to my mind that this connects also to not going perhaps all in on something. And this yeah. gives you the freedom to say, okay, this is not working. Let's put it aside for this moment. I was not going to delete it from my memory. It's still there, but now it's not working, I'm not learning anymore. I'm not enjoying perhaps so much. The excitement of the first year is faded away. Now it's just, I'm just grinding and, and not enjoying. And I don't want to be here. So, 
And when you are all in on one thing, it's like, okay, who am I if I'm not a successful founder? And so it's very hard to face that. It's very hard. What helped you to accept that this failed? Well, it's, it's very easy for me because I was not, I, I, I was not the person who left his job. I still had my job. I was helping on the weekends, on my free time. And I was more partner than uh, all in on this. So it's, it's very easy to see it from this. And I think what helped in the end is, okay, you have to, it was, we had a very tough moment when we decided we are going to stop. And actually uh, I would say that this is having kids and building a company together with your partner are two of the things that put really to the test of fire of the relationship. So we exactly. had so many challenging conversations, so many uncomfortable moments. And, and I'm very grateful also for having that because now I think our relationship is better. But I can imagine how it could have been the other way around and it wasn't. So this is, first of all, the, the first thing. And then what helps is related to this, being honest and having this difficult conversation, not, not looking to the other side. And also perhaps one thing that helps is time. When time passes, you see everything different. And there is one, actually I was listening today to a book that says, if you think about what's going to matter about this particular problem in, in 10 minutes, in 10 weeks and in 10 years, gives perspective. Okay, imagine I'm going to close the company. In 10 minutes, I will be very upset. I will be like, I don't want to see anyone. I, I will just dig a hole and go there or, or maybe whatever. <laughs> in 10 weeks, okay, in 10 weeks, I have to, to see what can I do because I still have my energy. I know, uh, but it will be challenging. In 10 years, when you see this, okay, of course, in 10 years, I will be better off than now because I will have this background, this knowledge. And I always think about the building a company or at least participating. It's like, of course, also into the, in the money investment needed to do this if you want to finish on, on your own. It's like a master. You have to pay for the master. So we were doing a master degree and we were paying for the master. So this was a way to see it. it's a master degree. How, how much are we going to invest into the master? Okay, this is our limit. No more than this. <laughs> that's, that's it. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and when did you start uh, with illustrations, with all this going on? And then you start yet another thing. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, this is a funny story because before the illustration, there was a, a course, which is uh, from the IMD professor at that point was Bill Fisher, which, by the way, is amazing professor he gave us so much and in this course in 2000 i think it was 2021 perhaps yeah and there was one thing when twitter was mm, the top uh, social media platform to share and especially to share information he had an article and i will sh share of course with you also which was called selfish tweeting and it, it's playing the, the main idea was that when you are Communicating something on social media is you don't do it for for people. You only, of course, you do it for others. But first of all, you do it for yourself. And this means that when you are sharing something like, like for example, when are, what we are doing now, you have to be sure of what you are saying. You have to believe in what you say. And uh, for example, and, and again, when we talk about the crypto, and I say, oh, nah, yes, I, I know how it works. And I, I'm not a super expert, but I know how it works. I can explain it, and, uh, and it sounds reasonable. Again, when you show something and you share it with all the world, and of course, a tiny percentage of people is going to see, maybe no one, but then again, you, you are putting it out. So it's a very vulnerable moment, and you have to be very sure of yourself of what you believe and what you want to share. So you, first of all, you do it for yourself. And he had a challenge and during this course, which was tweeting daily for the whole process of the course. And of course we accepted the challenge and it was whatever, you could tweet whatever, a thought, 
an article and re reply to another person. The thing was to start sharing and to get into the habit of sharing. And when you, the first, of course, the first step, it feels like, oh, I'm going to share something online. What are people going to say? I'm going to uh, feel ridiculous. And, and what they think about me, will this be appropriate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you do it, okay, it's not so bad. Let's do it again. And, and, and you take off the fear of doing it. And, and the second thing is then when you start seeing also people engaging, sharing, and you learn from each other, that's the moment when you start to enjoy it. And so this was the beginning of all the sharing and doing stuff online. And how does this connect with uh, the illustration? Okay, it's connect because again on Twitter, I was following a few visual creators and there was a moment, again, it was, was three years ago uh, in the NFT boom, you remember perhaps when everything was yeah. going to be an yeah. NFT and it was like, wow, yeah, exactly. So Metaverse, NFT, all this was yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, connected to the crypto mining, uh, you see how the, the connect, all the dots connect somehow. And I was following a few creators and there was one, and there still is, of course, which is Yanis Ozolins. He's one of the first that did it. And he did a collaboration with Naval Ravikan, with many people. And he's amazing. Big shout out, by the way, to Janice. So generous, brilliant. And m most of the things I learned, it's also from, from him and from the community. And as a way to support his work, I purchased one of his NFIT in this age. And, and again, it's, it's, it's one of the, which is called the Growth Mice and Puzzle. And here is, is a nice puzzle and you can, you can see it on foundation. Of course, I, I will also share that this, this one. And he, I reached out to him and said, oh, Janice, I bought this NFT. I love your work. Amazing. And go on. I, I admire what you're doing. And he said, oh, do you want to access to the course? And I said, oh, yes, the course. And he said, yes, I, every person who buys one of my NFT, I will give access to my visual, explain idea visually online course and access to the community. So I said, okay, let's try. And f since when I was a kid, I also used to draw comics and do this kind of things. And I said, yeah, let's try, let's play a little bit. And it was like playing in the beginning. I, I was like, I will buy an iPad so I can do it with my daughter. This was the, the idea. Then my daughter did a few of them. And then I said, okay, Valentina, <laughs> uh, this is my iPad. I will get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we still do something from time to time. She's my advisor, more Oh, okay. <laughs> on colors and combination, but 95, 99% of the time I use it. So <laughs> it's fun, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it was so funny. And, and so I started doing this kind of, again, as an experiment, and I tried to post the idea. And, and we, another beautiful thing was that we had a community and we supported each other, we gave us feedback. And, and now, fast forward two years and a half. 90, 950 plus illustrations. So fun. I enjoyed it wow. so much. And 950 yeah. plus illustrations you did. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> How do you find the time? <laughs> well, I, I have a secret. <laughs> okay. And that's what I want to know. Yeah, and the secret is that I am a robot. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, you don't sleep during the night. I don't exactly. know. Exactly, I don't sleep like like the mining ma machine during all twenty four hours. No, no, no. No, I think the most important thing, perhaps, that contributes to this is that I don't watch TV. I don't watch series. Nothing. It's, I'm not saying it's bad. I just say that I don't want to do it because I know that if I'm watching television or watching series, and there are a lot many things series. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars, for example. I love the Mandalorian. So uh, I have to choose what do I prefer to do this or to do that. And so I decided to skip television at all, no television. And then I, I, I have to think how many hours do I have in the day? 24 hours, eight hours of sleep, work, eating, family. The other hours I have to take up the most. So. 
that's the, the, the idea. And also I try to use systems for everything. And it helps me a lot. I'm, I'm very system oriented. I love to build again, to build things and, and, and to automate everything that I can. And, and, and this is also tricky because when you think of automation, for example, now that we, we were talking about sharing and you are also on LinkedIn, you are very active and perhaps you also see all these AI generated comments that, yeah, they're so common nowadays. And, and this is the side of automation that I don't want to see. And, and, but there are many things that you can do with automation. You can create templates. And then you can personalize a template according to the message. Of course, I have, let's say, an onboarding process for everything. And I have step one, step two, step three, step four. So I don't have to take it from scratch. And oh, what I'm going to say now. But of course, it's I use the template. And then I still engage as a human. So that's, that's the balance. So automate everything, document everything. And, and now it's so easy. We have so many systems that, for example, Notion is another thing that I, I built. I, I have everything in Notion. I have my journal. I have my, the connections, the articles, the illustration, all my knowledge database, the tasks, everything in Notion. I've talked about Notion because how it works for me. But again, it would be finding something that makes it feel effortless to do something and that you look forward to improving. So you can, again, take out some time or, or maybe even eliminate something. This, this is also a big, big challenge sometimes. You keep adding, automating, 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 but then it's infinite. You, as you said before, you can keep adding stuff and keep doing more and more. Even if you automate it to the maximum, you have to give up something at a certain point. And this is something that I still struggle with sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody struggles with that. Yes. So how how do you balance work, corporate work, fun work, you know, your side interests and family? Okay, I would say first of all, so my number one priority is my family. So I have to be very clear. And I, I know that I'm maybe missing out on something because this is my number one. But Again, my kids now are eight and six. They will be not eight and six all their life. Ever again. So this is the first and only moment that they will ask me, Dad, uh, I want you to read a story. And I, I always think of that and see if Valentina, when she asks me, there is a, something that we do, which is very nice, which I would say in Italian, which is sacco di patate, which is a, a bag of potatoes. And the second part is that I take her, but on on weight as as a, as a as a weight from the bed to her bed, <laughs> and and uh, and every time she says "Papa, a sacco di patate," I think maybe this is the last time that she's going to tell me, ask me to do that. So, of course, I could be doing a little more of my fun project. I could be doing a little bit more of work. This is what I'm choosing. So first of all, I have to know who I want to be. <laughs> I want to be a present father. And then the second thing that when you do this, you realize that there is a marginal uh, return on everything that you do that is decreasing. So when you do, say, eight hours work, the ninth, the 10th, the 11th, et cetera, hour, it's not as productive and as efficient and as impactful as the first one. Ideally, because this is, a, a, this is an ideal world, it's not the world where we live. Ideally, we will work perhaps from now to 10 or 20 years. Who knows? It's easy to, to see in the future. But I, I have a vision that we will work in different things and we will do our best in all of these things. And when you are working five hours, very focused on a project, you're doing and giving your best and that's where you are giving the most value. Then, again, the marginal return are reducing. As when you go on vacation, the first five days, oh, this is amazing. Then the sixth day, okay, it's more of the same. The seventh day, and then you, if you stay one month, okay, when are we going home? So 
<laughs> this, is, this is the balance, no? And and yeah. see where you're getting marginal returns on on your effort, and also not only in terms of impact, but also in terms of enjoyment. Am I still enjoying doing uh, my illustration after three hours, or with two hours is okay? So again, it's finding your balance and see. Of course, there there is a minimum. You have your time, you have your schedule. If you have a full time job, you have, I'm going to stay in my full time job. And if I have someone something something more, I will do it. No problem. And so you have to know where are your boundaries and know yourself perhaps also and see how are you feeling doing these things and if you enjoyed it or not. And if you don't enjoy it, ask yourself why I'm not enjoying this so much. And it feels like play or it feels like work. So the the perfect scenario would be doing something at your work that is connected. And I think most of the time you can find a connection with the things that you do as a hobby or as a side interest. And this gives you so much, let's say, depth in things and you can connect other ideas and you can take, this is something that I really believe, you can take not knowledge, of course, but ways of working from your project, from your personal project into your job and vice versa. What you see in your job helps you outside because for example, connected to the coaching example that it, when you, when I'm a coach, I'm with a person and I'm listening to this person and I'm asking and try to see which are the emotion of what has the, uh, what is not being said, etc. The coaching skill set can be 100% translated to a work setting when you have a difficult conversation with a colleague, when you have a meeting, you can read the expressions, the, the room and the, the interaction you have a different perspective. And you are not doing coaching, of course, you are using coaching skills. I'm not coaching, of course, anyone in my work. And and vice versa, when you are outside of your job, your, your mind does not switch off and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing close one door, open the other, everything is connected. So, for example, when I, I'm reading an article, I remember something that happened and oh, this is connected with that. And so you understand it better. And I, I also think that it's important, at least for me, to still have the feet on the ground and see the reality of how it is to work in a company. Because I can imagine that, I imagine that you do, just do these uh, other things and you are outside of a professional setting. You can talk about management, you can talk about leadership, you can talk about uh, personal development, but you are not living it every day. So the more distant you have from the, let's say, real world when things are happening, the more difficult it is perhaps to understand something. So mm -hmm. this mix, that's beautiful. It is for me, I think. How do you keep um, motivation um, when the things are hard? And especially doing so many things together. Okay, I have, actually I have two things which are from my own experience and my coach Teresa also worked with me on this. And the first one is this, this one, which is of course an illustration again. <laughs> the illustration, yeah. yeah. Is, are you playing to win or playing not to lose? So, okay. uh, what am I, from which perspective am I going into this challenge? Am I on the defensive? Am I trying to protect myself or whatever? Or am I trying to, to win? And not, not in the sense that I'm going to win someone and someone has to lose. So it's more that what do I have to win from this? What can I learn from this? And yeah, it's very easy now to say it. And it's not so easy in the moment. And we're all human. I'm human, of course. And, and sometimes this is why I have this here, because I have to remind myself a few times and then okay i want to be on the right i want to play to win <laughs> and the second one that helps a lot also is another one another illustration which is this <laughs> another illustration yeah, that, which is the negativity bias and we talk about many things in this conversation and this is like a, this puzzle again the, the puzzle metaphor there are so many beautiful things the sky is blue the sun is shining and this is all green it's amazing 
And why do I have to fixate on this single thing that, that growing wrong? So, and one thing that also helps is to think about all the positive things that we have. And again, when we focus more on these things, we tend to see more of this. And this also connects to one thing that I discovered in the last years, is that we can have more, much more impact and much more uh, autonomy than we can think in the beginning. So we can say, oh no, I cannot do that. This is not be possible. This is one work. And, but then you say, okay, how can I contribute to that? How can I take the initiative on that? How can I propose? I can reach out maybe to a person, to a colleague or to a friend. And then things happen. So it's surprising to see how you, when you focus on something, you see more of that. <laughs> So we, we focus on all the things that are going bad, etc. And, and, and I also do that. Of course, I'm human. Uh, but then, okay, now I have my minutes of complaining. What would I want? Who I want to be? How do I want? Another great question. How do I want the people to remember me? When things are not going as expected, the easiest way is to say, okay, oh, I'm going to complain, and, blah, and then people will understand, okay, this is tough, or whatever. But then they say, okay, but how do I want them to be remember me? Do I want Powerful them to be remembered as a positive person, uh, honest, uh, energetic, open, curious, or do I want them to remember as a person who's disengaged and doesn't care or just thinks about himself? No, I do it for myself. I don't do it for the other. I do it because I want to to be that person. I don't want to be the other one. <laughs> so this is very good. So you use the illustration for to explain everything. I have the feeling. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing is, uh, you have you know a, a very tech uh, background. I will say, uh, for lack of a better word and very analytical mind and in the same time you're creating something which is um which is illustration and it's it's like not connected with analytical not connected with computers right that two different completely different things so how does this mix work uh, honestly i mean i don't know I, I guess just yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it's just part of who we are. We are we are not one color only. I love technology. I love coding. I love AI tinkering with stuff. I have all the, the I have the Gemini Copilot, or, uh, ChatGPT. Now I have Cloud, and now it's open finally in uh, in the EU to get today the message. So and, and I want to play all this. And that's okay. And then. It's also good. I'm also, again, a human person. I have two kids and I have another side. So it's, we have many things. And, and this is also something that you discover with, with the people when, when you, when you ask them things and you have the idea, for example, oh, I, I know you are, now I know you are a Star Wars fan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and you also, you were from finance background. And maybe we have a stereotypical idea of finance professional executives. And then you ask them a question and say, oh, I didn't know that you had that. And then you say, you didn't ask? <laughs> 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 so I, I think it's maybe to normalize this and don't see people as mm, two-dimensional. It's, it's multi-dimensional. And, and we can keep adding dimension at infinite. So... <laughs> Who knows what, what will happen in three years when my kids will be uh, pre-teen. <laughs> Things will change again because, because life changes, because the environment changes and you change with it, right? So when people expect that, oh, um, only your values don't change. Your values stay the same, right? You want to be honest, open, decent person, human being. And no matter how the environment changes, you keep these values. But everything else, how you think about things, how what interests you, what things you like, what things you dislike, they can change. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and I would add, this is a brilliant point, honey. I love that you mentioned the values. And even I would dare to say that the values cannot be 180 degrees change. And still, you can add new values or you can, depending on the season of your life, again, related to parenthood, my values now are not the same than 10 years ago. Of course not. The curiosity, the experimentation, etc., are the same. But now I said my first priority is family. This is a value that perhaps I had on the number 50. And then mm. again, you can, <laughs> yes, and now it's, Number yeah, one. It's, and now it boom three. comes yeah. to the top, and it's okay. And 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 I would say that we can keep asking ourselves what's important to us. What do we want? What we don't want? Very important. I don't want this. Okay, what does this tell you that you don't want this? And we can keep adding. We, we don't. We are not a finite uh, list of value. And there is a beautiful coaching exercise which is the values discovery, where you ask many questions to the person, you start writing a lot of words. Boom, boom, boom. Everything that you get, you write it on a page. And what is beautiful that people, when they see it, they go, wow, I didn't know that I have all of this. And, that, and, and it's true because they have it. You heard this. You are not doing it for, oh, I want to. No, no. You just write down what you hear from score from your own perspective. And, and one thing that I always tell them is that you are all of this and you can be much more. I didn't ask you a certain question, perhaps another value would have surfaced. So don't limit yourself to this. And this, again, the idea of the infinite puzzle that you keep adding, sometimes one value will be bigger and sometimes it will be smaller. It doesn't mean that you don't have it anymore. So. And in this exercise, the, the very important thing that makes a difference is when you write these things down. Because when you write them down, people see them and they're just surprised because not a lot of people actually write what they think or what their values are. I mean, who would sit and write, oh, these are my values, one, two, three, four, five, nobody, right? And then when you have such an experience with a coach, you just suddenly realize, oh my goodness, that's me. Oh, I'm that person. I didn't know, <laughs> which, is, which is transformational. Absolutely. Yeah. And you discover that you have much more energy that you imagine suddenly you work a lot um in change and transformation actually your corporate job is uh, change and transformation so what is if somebody asks you roberto what would you recommend so i can adapt to change or accept change easier what are the three things you're going to advise somebody great topic yeah first one yeah and and, and it's constantly again evolving uh, what what first uh, i would say is that we have people things are are always happening and the people have to do it so you cannot mm, neglect the relationships communication and all these things even if you have i always say that if, even if you have the 100% technical, perfect situation and solution. If you explain it poorly, or if you don't involve the people, and if you don't come with their opinion, it's useless. So it's better to have an 80% or 70%, at least pretty decent solution and have everyone involved because then you have you will have to iterate and we will never be the first one, the one that works. And the sooner you involve the people and ask them, how are you going to work and, and take out the fear, if you can, of being judged or doing something wrong and, and all these things, the better, the sooner the better. Then one more thing is try to, to play and to have fun. Of course, there are certain process that can, but no, I, I would take it back. You can every, every time, everything, in every way, in every project, you can bring some more fun. And there's a, another brilliant question, which is from the book that I'm reading now, which is from Ali Abdal, which is a feel good productivity, which is from this morning. <laughs> the, it, it, uh, he says, uh, the question, how would this be if it was fun? And that's a brilliant question. because That's a brilliant question. Yeah. And, and maybe we can add some jokes. And of course, this is a, the level one, but you can add 
something uh, that engages people and brings them out from the serious world. And when you are in this play mode, of course, you cannot stay all the time in play mode, but when you activate your creative part, things happen more easily. And then you relax a little bit more. You are not worrying more about the, oh, this is not going to work. But, and, and this is another thing. So bring some play into, into this. And then, yeah, perhaps one of the things that works a lot is to reach out to people and to find uh, and even at all levels. It's not always the manager who is the, let's say, the most influential person on a project. And it's all, always the people doing the work. It's like finding a mix of people, perhaps at all levels, see how things are seen from each uh, part of the organization. So we avoid the, the seeing only the big vision or the big picture, for example. We avoid it's only seeing one thing. So all these different perspectives help. And, and also, uh, you discover, when you do this, you discover a lot of brilliant uh, people, brilliant ideas. And again, it it's connects with the, with the people part. You don't, don't, you don't do that to them. We do it together. So that would be the idea. Exactly. You don't do it. Yes. You don't do this for them. Yeah. To them, you're doing it together. That that's a great uh, that's a great point. Right. So we're towards the end of the podcast, and I just want to ask several personal questions. So, what was the best moment of your life? Ah, that's easy. <laughs> the best probably it was the day when I became a father. I still remember. <laughs> What is the one thing we still don't know about you? You told us so many things about you, but what is one other things we don't know? Uh, one thing you don't know yet. Oh, what can be? Well, perhaps that I, I love, I love hiking, nature, and all these things and open air. This is something that really excites me. I get so much energy from that. Great. Thank you so much for this conversation. It was really um, inspiring and um, seeing you doing so, so many things. And I hope that people that are listening and watching can see that that's possible, that uh, you can have a job and you can have many other interests and you can still be involved father, present father and a great, great illustrator and a great influencer on LinkedIn and many other things. So thank you for this. Thank you for showing that this is possible. Thank you, Annie. And I hope people also share their experience. And, and, and as you said, they can, it can be many things, infinite things. Thank you so much.